10 tips for studying chemistry. Now, it was kind of hard because I'm, I'm sure I could come up with more than 10 tips, but I decided to sort of distill it down. See what I did there? Decided to distill it down to 10 tips, uh, which I think are pretty good, and they're not in any particular order. Um, some of them are probably more important than others, but I'll obviously I'll let you be the judge of that. So let's start with tip number one. So tip number one is to have a learning mindset. So in my mind, there are basically two types of chemistry students. There's the student who is generally, uh, genuinely interested in chemistry or just interested in science. And so categorically, they're interested in chemistry. And then there's the other type of student who really dislikes chemistry, doesn't have any interest in learning it and is only taking it and trying to do well in chemistry because chemistry is like the gatekeeper between where you are and where you want to be in terms of your career. Maybe you want to be a, a doctor or something like that. You don't really care about chemistry. You just want to be a doctor. Um, but I would challenge you if you're in that group of people who don't really care about chemistry, don't like it, I would challenge you to give chemistry a chance. I mean, the way, I don't know, the way I think about it is if you have a choice between learning something or not learning something, why not choose learning something? I mean, you're here, you're in this class, um, you have this knowledge presented to you, you're paying for it most likely. Um, so why not pick up some knowledge from that? Um, having a learning mindset and, and starting from a place of trying to understand the content better, um, that is what I would recommend. Um, I think a good grade will follow if you just uh, make that connection with the content and have a learning mindset. So that brings us right along to tip number two. Tip number two, it's pretty obvious, but a lot of people ignore it, is to actually read your chemistry textbook. Do not think that reading just the bullet points on the PowerPoint slides that your professor publishes is any kind of thorough understanding of the content. You must read your book if you expect to do well in your chemistry class. And I know there's those a couple of people who can just read PowerPoints and do well on the exams, but I assure you, if you want a thorough, comprehensive understanding of the material, you have to read your textbook. And again, you probably bought the textbook, so you might as well read it. So read the textbook. Tip number three is to handwrite your notes. So I do not recommend typing your notes. I don't recommend using a tablet or a computer or anything like that, uh, because when you actually write something down and to paper, um, it's a much more neurologically involved process and you are much more likely to retain information that you actually write down um, than you are something that you typed up, right? Now I understand that sometimes <laughs> professors go through their PowerPoint slides really, really fast, and it's it's difficult to write down uh, everything uh, that you wanna write down at any given time. Um, but if, if something like that happens, you can always visit your professor during office hours. Maybe you know he can give you the slides and you can sort of write down uh, on your own after class. You can sort of take finish taking the notes that you weren't able to take during the class. Uh, but yes, handwriting your notes will really, really help you out compared to typing them up or putting them in a tablet or recording your professor's voice when he's talking or, or anything like that. Handwritten notes, very important. All right, so we're right along to tip number four. Tip number four is to get ahead of your class. What do I mean by get ahead of your class? What I mean is to at least read the chapter of your chemistry textbook uh, that your lecture is going to be about before the lecture begins. You'll be able to get much more out of that lecture, much more out of that class session, if you know what you're going to be discussing before you go in, because then you can actually come up with questions that are more fine-tuned and relevant uh, to what you're talking about, and it'll just give you a better sense of what's going on, and you'll be less likely to you know, tune out and stare into space and think about the three episodes of Family Guy you watched the night before or whatever, right? So it'll help you be more engaged in your lectures if you have some understanding of what is going to be discussed uh, before the lecture begins. Get ahead of your class. The next tip, tip number five, is to avoid memorization whenever possible. Avoid memorization whenever possible. So the important thing to understand about chemistry is that chemistry is very accumulative. Right? Chemistry is not like a history class where you study the 1920s and you memorize a few factoids about it and then take a test on the 20s and then you're now you're studying the 30s and so everything that you learned about the 20s that you were tested on, you can just toss away, you don't need it again. Chemistry does not work that way. Okay, in order to understand more advanced chemistry concepts, you have to have a rock solid understanding of earlier concepts. 
right? And so this is one of the reasons why it's important to try to avoid memorizing things. Instead, try to understand the fundamental underlying principles that govern the formulas, the equations, whatever, uh, so you don't have to memorize them. Believe me, if you're taking chemistry, there's enough material that you will have to memorize, which leads us into our next tip, which is when you do have to memorize things, like let's say uh, you're trying to memorize the common polyatomic ions, like acetate ion, um, nitrate ion, NO3 minus, uh, carbonate ion, CO3 two minus, and so on and so forth, right? If you're studying those polyatomic ions, you, you have to memorize them. And so if you do have to memorize something, use flashcards. So in that example that I talked about earlier with the polyatomic ions, you could have like the name of the polyatomic ion on one side, and then you can have like the formula for that polyatomic ion on the other. And then you can sort of quiz yourself. You can look at the formula and try to try to remember what name it is. You can look at the name, try to remember what the formula is. Do that over and over and over again uh, with a partner if you can, that would be good. Um, and that will help you with memorization. Okay, so that brings us right along to tip number seven, which is to utilize your professor's office hours. I think most colleges, most universities have some sort of policy that like forces the professors to keep some sort of office hours in which uh, it's like an open door policy and students can walk in. I know there are other professors who have office hours that are by appointment only, but regardless, there are uh, rules requiring professors to hold some form of office hours. I highly suggest that you visit your professors during their office hours because they will be able to help you with anything uh, that you're having a hard time with. And also, visiting your professors during their office hours has the added benefit of making a connection, adding a connection to your network. It may not matter right this moment, but at some point when you're done with college, you'll need to get a job. And it's much, much better. Uh, you'll have a much, much better time of it, of getting a job, uh, having more connections. So by visiting your professor during his office hours or her office hours, you'll make that connection. They'll know your face. And maybe when you get around to graduating or applying for grad school or going to work, whatever, uh, you'll at least have them as a connection. Maybe even uh, they'll write you a, a letter of recommendation or something like that. So utilize your professor's office hours. Uh, it is beneficial, not just in getting uh, clearing up the questions you might have about the material, but also uh, just making that connection uh, with somebody who is connected, right? So that's tip number seven. Tip number eight is I highly recommend that you study in groups. So befriend your classmates, get to know your classmates um, and study in groups. This has the, the benefit of just having another person's uh, perspective. Maybe they, they can help explain things in a different way that you don't understand and you can sort of help help them out too. You can sort of help each other. Um, you can study together. You can kind of um, have like a almost like a friendly competition where you're trying to, you know, outdo them. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously, don't get too crazy with it. But, you know, studying in groups, it does kind of uh, help with accountability because if, if you're studying on your own, there's really nobody around making sure you're staying focused. But if you're studying in a group and, you know, you don't want to be like the one guy who doesn't contribute his or her portion to the group. Right. Um, so that's why I recommend studying in groups. Very, very very important. Um, and also studying in groups has the added benefit, just like visiting your professor during his office hours of adding more connections, right? Your classmates and you eventually will all be in a position where you have to apply for a job. And if you know somebody who works for some company and they can vouch for you, well, that goes a long way uh, to helping you get hired uh, at your uh, at whatever job you apply for, right? So uh, that is tip number eight. Tip number nine is to practice 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 okay the point is to be so good at this stuff that when it comes time to be tested on it it is second nature to you and you can do it very 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 easily um, that's the whole point so do all those problems at the end of the chapter in your textbook do all those problems that your professor assigns to you and if when you're done with all that, do them all again or ask your professor if there's more problems. Now, I understand you probably have other classes, too, and you can't devote every waking hour you have to understanding your chemistry class. Totally understand that. Uh, but the fact remains, um, practicing is very, very important because you don't want to be stuck uh, on test day um, when, you know, you don't want to get stuck somewhere and wherein if you would have practiced more, you would have been able to do the problem uh, 
without any problems. So, all right, so that's tip number nine. And then tip number 10, which I personally think is the most important, is to take care of yourself. Um, you know, eating, sleeping, drinking water, these aren't just luxuries that are only available to people who are not as busy as a college student. Uh, they are basic human needs. And so I would, if I were you, prioritize them accordingly, okay? No class, no grade, no diploma is worth taking a significant blow to your uh, mental or your physical health. They are of utmost priority, you know? If, it, if you have to take a break from a class or something like that to focus more on your on your health, to make sure you're getting healthy, you're eating right, you're exercising, you're drinking enough water, all this and that, so be it. Because one is much more important than the other. So those are my 10 tips for studying chemistry.